There we go. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Roger Paul. And tonight we're going to continue our study on paper 108, the mission and ministry of the thought adjusters. And we're in section four, paragraph five. Uh, we have one more paragraph before we get into the next section. We're going to cover it real quick. And uh, we'll go from there. So, and that's on page 1191 of the original book for those who are following by the book. And uh, let's say a little prayer and we'll get started for the night. Father, thank you for this wonderful revelation. We thank you for your presence in each and every one of us every day. We pray that we can open our hearts and minds to your leading and your voice so that we can actually hear you and eventually fuse with you and become cosmic citizens. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for all the blessings you give each and every one of us throughout our lives. And we say this in the name of your son, Michael, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Okay, let's get started. We're going to get through more than just four slides tonight. I guarantee it. <laughs> As we did I, Tuesday. Um, but I have a question. Okay. Off. All right. From last uh, Tuesday? Thursday. Oh, last Thursday. Okay. The one that I missed, but I got to review it. Uh, good because you stated that uh, once we fuse with our adjuster, we'll receive our permanent name. Right, right. But until then, we're known as our adjuster's number, correct? By the, by the celestial beings, we're known by the adjuster's number. That's right. As a person you know, separate from the adjuster, we're still known as our regular names up until the time of fusion. At that point, we get our new name and we will be called known by that, the, the new name of our adjuster. So I okay. should carry the name Rodney with me to yes. mansion early. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you should. When you wake up on the mansion wards, unless you've already fused, you know, it takes talks about this and we don't talk a whole lot about this, but some some human beings fuse with their jester right after death. And so when they wake up on the mansion world, they have fused. They don't realize they have fused. So it, it, they have to have their guardian angels and the uh, archangel to inform them that they have fused uh, in the process of dying. You know, so that that does happen. Now, normally we'll fuse between the third and the fifth mansion world. Normally, most people. So, you know, and it's kind of funny. I, I, I don't mention this enough. People say, well, I'm I'm behind everybody else if I don't do this or that. And that's not the way it works at all. If you do not fuse to the fifth mansion world, that is just fine because you have all eternity to do all this stuff. OK, so you're not on a time scale, period. So after you after you die, if you fuse right away, that's that's great. If you don't fuse for another million years with your adjuster, that's fine, too, as long as you st stay loyal to God, the father and your plan is to fuse with that adjuster. And that should be your, your goal of your spiritual life first is to fuse. The second goal of your spiritual life should be to make it to paradise to stand before God the Father, right? That's the way it should work. So if you fuse on the first mansion world, great. If you fuse on the seventh mansion world, great. If you don't fuse until you get to the system capital, which we know is the case with many individuals because where did the Kalagasha 100 come from? They came from a group of individuals that hadn't fused and they asked for volunteers for non-fusion individuals to come to a planet to do what they did. Okay. Oh, so is that, how, is that why they got rascally? Yeah, that's exactly why, Gary. When they came to this planet, they no longer they were separated from their thought adjuster. All 100 of them. So their thought adjusters were left on Jerusalem when they came to this planet. Those who were unloyal and uh, were taken away in chains, their thought adjusters are still on Jerusalem waiting for the adjudication. Wow. So, 
And those that did not, that were loyal and went on to the mansion worlds immediately rejoined their thought adjusters. So that's the way it works. But the fact that they did not have those thought adjusters when they were on this planet may be a good reason why 60 out of 100 rebelled, right? Because they were talked into evil, basically. You know, the, the best thing that can happen to us in life is never be touched by evil to the point where you do not recognize and follow your thought adjuster okay that's that's or the best thing. One to follow yes you know i was reading something today from the book we were talking about reading the mansion world thing and it talked about i'm in i think it was in the 15th chapter it talked about um one of the people's father was working uh as a counselor on the children's the 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 world of the father where the children raise are raised and one of the things he discusses in the book is the fact that some of the children choose not to survive and <laughs> and sarah or kara or one of the two of the beings the story's about asks why would a, why would someone choose not to survive and he was talking about how as they grew up they they got this attitude of really rebellion is what it is this attitude that they didn't believe in an unseen god and they didn't want to take the time that it takes to get to paradise so at 16 when they have to make the decision they choose not to survive so the life force is taken away from them they disappear you know and that's one of the things so you know what a sad sad thing but this this father of them that had done this had worked with in hospice on this planet before he died and he says it's the same principle when you go to hospice there's many people that die in hospice without a belief that they're going to continue on and that's that's the ministry he was doing before he died so and he says it's the same principle people make these decisions and no matter what you say to them, no matter how you counsel them, no matter what you do, sometimes they will not survive. They will not choose to survive. And there's not a thing you can do about it. All you can do is give them your experiences, your uh, expectations of the mansion world and stuff like that, and help get them gain just that flicker of faith. And that's really all you can do. You cannot force someone to go on mm -hmm. to the mansion worlds right well part of the problem with people i think not choosing to go on is is that they overly intellectualized uh, reality and uh, uh, the creative process of the universe you know they they intellectualize everything away i agree with you 100 percent, lech i think that's a big part of it right sometimes yeah. we get too smart for our own goods you know what i'm saying yeah that's that's all there is to it. So anyway, so I just thought I'd share that with y'all. You know, you can't imagine a child growing up from nothingness to, you know, 16 years old and not getting a concept of God the Father when they have so many good influences around them on these, on the worlds of the Father. You know, I mean, I, I, I can't even con conceive of that. I just remember when I was a young man, you know, 14, 15, 16, I couldn't sleep at night worrying about what happens to us when we die. You know, I mean, uh, really. And I've been taught all this terrible stuff about God, the father being vindictive and killing people and, and all this, all these untruths my whole life. So, um, you know, I was kind of goaded into belief. But it's kind of funny because I, even though I was goaded into believing in Jesus, I still had the basic understanding that God was my father. And I guess it was my thought adjuster communicated with me on that. And I never I never swayed from that ever in my life. You know, so it's just your influences. 
around you. Yeah, Gary. It's just a question. When you mentioned, uh, you know, people in hospice and stuff, I had a friend that was a Jewish Holocaust survivor. Yeah. Horrific experience. He was liberated at 15, nationally orphaned. Everybody else in his family was dead. I asked him if we believed in God. And he was Jewish. I mean, he was, a, yeah. uh, you know, he followed the Jewish faith, et cetera. Even right. though he married a Christian woman, she converted to Judaism yeah. for him. Anyway, here's the story. Um, I asked him what he believed, and he says, I am an agnostic because I cannot believe that God would allow that to happen to his people. Yeah. Uh, Where would he be? Would he have the chance to go on or not? Or If he did not have that flicker of faith that he would, no, he wouldn't, Gary. I'm sorry to say. You know, you can't, it, it's not, it's not, maybe you'll make it or you won't make it. You know what I'm saying? You have to have that ounce of faith, of belief that you will wake up on that mansion world to get there. And if you don't have that faith, when you die, that's it. There is no more. I don't know where he's at then. Yeah. And nobody can determine that, Gary. You know, no matter what people tell you, you can't tell for sure. Because how many people have you heard about deathbed confessions? You know, it happens constantly. They wait to the last second and then they start asking God for help. And when they do that, what happens? They wake up on the mansion worlds. You know, that's cheating. It's cheating, but that's what happens. It's the way it is. Mm -hmm. It's the mercy of God. It's not for me to say, right? But you stop and think they are behind the eight ball once they get on the other side. That's right. They start from scratch. Just like this book we've been reading, they start from square one. It's, it, you know, the first mansion world is a remedial world. It tries to get you up to snuff, right? And some of us will leave there in 10 days and some of us won't. That's just the way it is, right? Okay, let's try to get it get through some of these chapters and or these paragraphs tonight. Diane, would you take the first one? Too? We are cognizant of many spirit phenomena in the far flung universe, which we are at loss fully to understand. We are not yet masters of all that is transpiring about us, and I believe that much of this inscrutable work is wrought by the gravity messengers and certain types of mystery monitors. I do not believe that adjusters are devoted solely to the remar remar remaking, remaking. <laughs> of, <laughs> remarking, remaking of mortal minds. I am persuaded that the personalized monitors and other orders of unrevealed pre-personal spirits are representative of the Universal Father's direct and unexplained contact with the creatures of the realms. Okay, so what he's saying here is this. There are many, many, there's seven types of groups of uh, thought adjusters or pre-personal fragments of God. Okay, so the, we're only one of those seven. The thought adjusters that come and dwell human beings is only one of those seven fragments, okay, that are out there. So this is what they are saying here. This is a... Solitary Messenger, if I remember correctly, stating that um, a lot of the work that these other adjusters do ha have to do with other types of beings other than just mortals. Okay, so, so what he's saying here is they believe that those fragments of God the Father are in many, many, many types of different celestial beings also. And this allows God the Father to be personally involved in every realm of celestial being in the creation of the grand universe. You follow me? Did I make that clear or make it muddy? Yes. I follow you. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, so that's what he's saying here. So it's not just the thought, thought adjusters that are within us, but there's other other fragments that are in other types of beings. Okay, and we got to remember that because God is in a lot of different types of beings. 
Could you uh, perhaps give us an example? Yeah, a perfect example is the they make right here is the personalized monitors. When a when a thought adjuster serves with a uh, a uh, magisterial sun or a creator sun that comes to the planet, they can't fuse with those ad adjusters because they are local universe sons of God, or they're already sons of God that come from paradise. And if they're already sons of God that come from paradise, they don't need to fuse with a father fragment permanently because they're already sons of God. Does that make sense? So after they finish their bestowal, those adjusters are released and they are mostly personalized. They're given their own personality. So they go on as separate entities, just like we do. Okay, so that's a perfect example of other types of beings that would be created or have father fragments. Now, we don't know uh, from what they teach us in the book, they don't teach us this, but we don't know that there's other types of cel celestial beings higher than mortals that also receive adjusters and fuse with those adjusters just like we do. Okay. So we don't know that for sure because they don't tell us. There's a lot of beings, you know, that they probably only tell us about one one hundredth of the types of beings that are out there in the universe. So I'm sure there's other types of mortal like beings or just above mortal like beings that get a thought adjusters and confuse with those also. Right. OK. God, the father is amazing. It's uh, it's not just it's not just. uh one way. I have one one type of thing. Hang on, y'all. I have lost my not my mind, but I've lost my <laughs> thing here. There it is. Okay. Cursor. Yeah, my cursor. There we go. Adjust your mission. Okay. Now my wife would disagree with you sometimes about that <laughs> last statement. Losing my mind. <laughs> she still loves me though. <laughs> forever, forever. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Okay, the adjuster's menu, me, mission. Jane, would you take the next one, please? Okay. The adjuster's mission. The adjusters accept a difficult assignment when they volunteer to indwell such composite beings as live on Urantia, but they have assumed the task of existing in your minds there to receive the admonitions, the admonitions, 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 thank you, yes. you right. admonitions yes. of the spiritual intelligences of the realms, and then to undertake to redictate or translate these spiritual messages to the material mind. They are indispensable to the paradise ascension. And what types of beings would the adjusters get admonitions from? That's a good question, isn't it? Yeah, it is a good question. Okay, so I'm going to give you the answer. The types of beings that the uh, thought adjuster would get admonitions from are things like the spirit of truth from the creator son or the spirit of truth from the eternal son himself or admonitions from the infinite spirit through the Holy Spirit, or admonitions from the local universe mother spirit through the Holy Spirit also, plus the seven adjutant mind spirits. Mm -hmm. They may get admonitions through them also. So we have a lot of spiritual influences that the thought adjuster receives these influences and tries to interpret these into a spiritual message for the material mind, okay? <clears throat> so let me give you another good example of that. As you get closer and closer to fusion with your thought adjuster, you actually start to hear the thought adjuster itself, the voice of God, okay? <clears throat> And when that voice of God starts coming through, it may be messages not only from God the Father, but it may also be messages from the Creator Son, the local universe Mother Spirit, or the Infinite Spirit, or the Eternal Son also. Okay? So, Gary. 
Has anybody here talked to this uh, thought adjuster? Let me. Yeah. Gary, there's been twice in my life, I swear, I heard the, the voice of God, and I was wrong both times. <laughs> so you have to be careful. careful what you say, God tells you, you know. And I admit that I was, I was wrong. I was 100% convinced I was right, but I was wrong. Okay. So, and it's a learning lesson when that happened to you. You are very apprehensive about taking that stance again. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to be misled. You know, it's easy for the old P mind of our own to step in and say, this, this needs to be this and this needs to be this. And think it, it's a message from God when it's really just a message from your own psyche. You know, so. But it can happen. It happens on this planet. So I'm sure there's other Urantians that's read this book many times that maybe have an ongoing communication with their thought adjuster, you know, so who's to say, yeah, I, I'm not going to be stepping up there and say, no, you're not hearing from God. You're hearing from yourself. I would definitely never do that. You know? Okay. The next one. Uh, Lech, would you take the next one, please? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> what the thought adjuster cannot utilize in your present life those truths which he cannot successfully transmit to the man of his betrothal he will faithfully preserve for use in the next stage of existence just as he now carries over from circle to circle those items which he fails to register in the experience of the human subject owing to the creature's inability or failure to give a sufficient degree of cooperation. So according to this, it's up to us how much we cooperate, this will happen. And it's talking about here, notice it says it carries over from circle to circle. What are they talking about there? Psychic. So, the, yeah, the psychic circles, okay? So we know that we have to get to the th third psychic circle, right, to uh, actually get to the point where we automatically translate to the mansion worlds after we die, right? But before we're done, we have to get to the very first psychic circle. Am I backwards on that? I don't remember. Anyway, we have to get to the top level of the circles to fuse with our adjuster. So the higher you go, the more... Uh, the thought adjuster has the opportunity to fuse with you. So that's what they're talking about here. We have to go from circle to circle. And then as you got get higher and higher, closer to God the Father, then eventually you, you get through with all the circles and you're done. That's what it's saying. And at that point, you're ready for adjuster fusion. The other interesting thing, too, is when you get higher and higher, what do you need less and less? The seven adjutant mind spirits. Okay? Because the last two of the seven adjutants are what? Worship and wisdom. And when you get to the point where you're ready to fuse with the thought adjuster, what's that? That's the ultimate consistency of worship okay so if you want to start a practice that's going to get you closer and closer and closer to the thought adjuster what would that be worship, worship. yeah the more you learn to worship the more you work, learn to communicate with your thought adjuster the closer you're going to get to fusion make sense so that's once you use um you enter into the cosmic mind. You you yeah, you step into the cosmic mind over control. Okay. Okay. You don't need the adjutants anymore. You go into the cosmic mind, and that's the super universe control, right? Not the local universe. Okay, I see you do. That's one of those stink bugs. Just looked up and saw him walking across the uh, let's see if I got a paper towel or something. Y'all excuse me for a second. 
He's I got to take right. care of something. I got to murder something if he's still there. Hope it doesn't stink. <laughs> Did he yeah. disappear here? He's behind. You're right there, right there, right there. Ah. I've heard they're actually friendly. Uh, yeah. No, they're, there are dangers, though. I'd read an article about that. I don't want to be buddies with one of them, yeah. you know, if y'all don't mind. <laughs> Never used to bother me until I read about him. Yeah, he was crawling <laughs> across our screen here. <laughs> so, I don't think he can read if he did. But, you know, I'm a murderer. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's go on to the next. Did we just read this or did we read this yet? Uh, just, no, we just, just read that. Yeah. We? we did not. Yes, no. Yes. No, and so uh, yeah, we yes, we did. Yes, we did. Okay. All right. To give us the, yeah. Okay. Let's go into the next one. All right. Uh Rodney, would you take this one, please? Yes. One thing you can depend upon. The adjusters will never lose anything committed to their care. Never have we known these spirit helpers to default. Angels and other high types of spirit beings, not accepting the local universe type of sons, may occasionally embrace evil, may sometimes depart from the divine way, but adjusters never falter. They are absolutely dependable. And this is equally true of all seven groups. Okay, so all seven types of adjusters are always faithful. That's one of the important things, too, of focusing our existence on fusing with that adjuster, okay? Because once you fuse with that adjuster, your life is guaranteed forever. You won't have to worry about defaulting and all that because God is not going to rebel against himself, right? Right. Any way you look at it, he's just not going to do that. So once you fuse with that adjuster, you're good to go. How can an adjuster ever become faulty? Up? They can't. So, it, it's it's a part of God. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it, it's part of the you become part of the postulated I am, as they say, right? I am that I am. I'm in everything. There's no changing me. And once you fuse with that, you don't change. You grow, but you don't ever go back to evil again. That's for sure. Okay. Next one. Uh, Gary, would you take the next one, please? Your adjuster is the potential of your new and next order of existence. The advanced bestowal of your eternal sonship with God, by and with the consent of your will, the gesture has the power to subject the creature trends of the master of the material mind to the transforming actions of the motivations and purposes of the emerging mortal soul. soul. Morantial soul, yes. Morantial, excuse me. Yeah, Marantial So, you know, this is an interesting concept, but, you know, all the stuff uh, we go through on this life is remembered by the adjuster and star. And that's all part of your mind and your mental and personality, right? Who owns the mental, the mindal, and the personality when you die? Who owns it? Yeah, who owns it? We the do. Thought adjust. No, the thought adjuster does. Okay. The soul, the morontial soul that you're developing on this planet is carried by whom? Your guardian angel. So when you die, your soul is transported by your guardian angels to the mansion world. Your mindal records and your personality, which what is the personality? It's a gift from God, is it not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your mind, your record of who you are and your personality is carried to the mansion world by the thought adjuster. Okay. Um, 
could be because some Marantia soul being it's got material to it right. has to transport it. Whereas your data yeah. is that who you doesn't have to be because it goes with the thought adjuster, right? <laughs> now, when you get back to the mansion world, it's all put back together, right? In your new Marantia being, your new Marantia body. Okay, so your soul's separate from your mind and your personality. And when you get on the mansion worlds and they give you a new body, they stick them all back together, right? Humpty Bump Dumpty gets put back together again, right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Two separate things. Now, when you fuse that soul, that mind record, and the personality all combine into one. A oneness and that oneness is your new person your fused thought adjuster person okay the reason this is important is this if you die and you do not survive okay your personality your mind records everything about your life and everything else goes with whom the thought adjuster mm -hmm. okay? So when that thought adjuster is reassigned to a new person, new human being, it will go with them. It will go with them. That's right. Okay. What happens to the soul? Supreme being. Supreme being. Experience of the supreme being. It's absorbed in the universe and, and of the supreme being. I have a... Uh, You have a hand on your screen. I see. I just saw that. Who that is? Did Gary do that? I don't know. I don't know who that is. Let me go over here. Y'all give me one second. I hope hmm. it's not me. No, no it's, 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 it's me. Okay. It's on mine. I don't know how to get rid of it, though. Reactions. Yeah, it's under reactions. Um, we'll just leave it for tonight. I'll figure it out later. Right? Okay. Just everybody wave at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So... Everybody will think I'm important because I have extra hand. <laughs> <laughs> extra hand. That's right. Okay. Um, did I just advance that? You're just a potential new exit. Did we just read that? I believe so. Yes, that's the one I just read. Okay. All right. Let me go on to the next one. Okay. Gary is up next. No, he just read. So Diane's up next. The mystery monitors are not thought helpers. They are thought adjusters. They labor with the material mind for the purpose of constructing by adjustment and spiritualization, a new mind for the new worlds and the new name for your future career. Their mission chiefly concerns the future life, not this life. They are called heavenly helpers, not earthly helpers. They are not interested in making the mortal career easy. Rather, are they concerned in making your life reasonably difficult and rugged so that decisions will be stimulated and multiplied. The presence of a great thought adjuster does not bestow ease of living and freedom from strenuous thinking, but such a divine gift should confer a sublime peace of mind and a superb tranquility of spirit. Wow. Okay, so they are not they are not there to make you feel good, are they? All right. They're not there to make your life easy or anything like that. They're, that's not their job. It's just like the angels. Everybody thinks that the angels are there to protect you and keep you from safe and all this stuff. That's not the angel's job. I'm sorry. Sorry to disappoint you. The angel's job is to put difficult things in your life. So you have to make lots and lots of decisions so that you grow spiritually. Okay. The thought adjusters, however, 
are there to take those decisions you make and turn them into something spiritually viable for your future life. Okay, so they try to spiritualize your life, not try to keep you from going and walking off a cliff or stepping in concrete or something like that. Okay, that's not their job. Not my job, man. Okay, so so the things they do in this life are for mostly concern your future life, your marancha life. And so they try to spiritualize everything that goes on in your life to the point that those things are remembered when you get to the mansion world and they don't fall off like scaffolding, they actually become a permanent part of your life. Make sense? That's their job. However, your thought adjuster will do what? It will lead you if you allow it to, okay? So it will lead you in the paths of what? And it says this in the Bible. Righteousness, right? That's part of its job. Okay. One more. Hang on here. Okay. And I believe Jane's up next. Okay. Your transient and ever-changing emotions of joy and sorrow are in the main purely human and material reactions to your internal psychic climate and to your external material environment. Do not therefore look to the adjuster for selfish consolation and mortal comfort. It is the business of the adjuster to prepare you for the eternal adventure, to assure your survival. It is not the mission of the mystery monitor to smooth your ruffled feelings or to minister to your injured pride. It is the preparation of your soul for the long ascending career that engages the attention and occupies the time of the adjuster. Okay, so if you're looking to your adjuster to, to uh, soothe you and make you feel better, you're looking in the wrong place, aren't you? Right. It's not his job. It's his job to prepare you for the future. Right. Who whose job is it to make sure that you're doing OK mentally and and to soothe your ruffled feelings and that sort of thing? Your, yourself. It's your, your job. Right. Yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. That's part of being mentally competent and mentally healthy to be able to go through life and handle the experiences of what? Decisions, 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 and more decisions. Okay, that is part of life. And it's how you handle those decisions indicates your spiritual growth. Okay, all right. Be perfect even as I am perfect, right? That's our job. Okay, Letch, would you take the next one? Okay. I doubt that I am able to explain to you just what the adjusters do in your minds and for your souls. I do not know that I am fully cognizant of what is really going on in the cosmic association of a divine monitor and the human mind. It is all somewhat of a mystery to us, not as to the plan and purpose, but as to the actual mode of accomplishment. And this is just why we are confronted with such difficulty in finding an appropriate name for these supernal gifts to mortal men. So they don't even know how it all works, do they? Mm -hmm. Right? That's basically yeah. what he's saying. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a mystery to us also. Okay. Which is good. We don't have to feel so bad that we don't understand everything. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Okay. Uh, Rodney, would you take the next one? Yes. The thought adjusters would like to change your feelings of fear to convictions of love and confidence, but they cannot mechanically and arbitrarily 
do such things. That is your task. In executing those decisions which deliver you from the fetters of fear, you literally supply the psychic fulcrum on which the adjuster may subsequently apply a spiritual lever of uplifting and advancing illumination. Do y'all remember when we watched the movie Defending Your Life a long yeah. time ago? <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was about getting rid of what? Fear, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the whole movie was about. And that's literally what it's saying here is you have to get over all these unfounded fears that you've developed in your life get stop sitting on your hands and do something basically okay and that something you need to do is not let these fears that we have been taught our whole life continue to affect you and slow you down in your spiritual progress what's the number one fear that you need to get away from fear of god the father okay you need to replace that emotion of fear with the emotion of love. Make sense? Can you? Pardon me, Gary? Okay. I'm just a little bit, I understand. Um, with the Christian belief and Jewish belief of God being a uh, loving and uh, He could be either way. He can knock the blocks off you or you can love the heck out of you. And, yeah. um, that and that's not correct. With me, so I, I never saw that's it not as correct, fear. Because, huh? yeah, well, see, that's the problem is the early bad ones, you know, uh, Abraham and Moses and all these, all these people taught the bad ones to fear God. OK, reason being, that's the only way they could control them and keep them from constantly killing each other, raping each other's wives, stealing each other's goods, killing each other's uh, uh, children, making slaves of them and that sort of thing. So the only way they could control them was what? Fear. Through fear. Through fear. The opposite should have been taught to them. It's the love of God that we do not want to do these things. It's because of the love of God we do not want to do these things. And that fear of God has been translated into the fear of what in our time? Government. Okay? Think of it this way. When you are in constant fear that the government's going to take your money, going to take this away from you, that away from you, tax you to death, keep you from having uh, choices, that sort of thing, that's a, that's a government based on fear. It's the same principle with a, gut, with the, a religion based on fear. And probably, I would step out on a limb and say at least 60% of the religions out there are based on the fear of God, not the love of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's what it should be based on. And that's what they're talking about here, okay? If you can get over these fetters of fear, you supply the psychic fulc fulcrum in which the adjuster can spiritualize your life because you go from fearing everything to realizing God the Father's in charge of everything. So there's nothing in existence to fear, nothing, all right? Remember what Jesus taught us. Jesus said, there is nothing I perceive in this vast universe that means harm to me. Remember that? That is friendly. It's friendly. It's a friendly universe. And you get outside this planet and away from all this wrong thought and teachings, you realize this is a friendly universe. You know, it's probably... You know, uh, what an example we got this week in this book we've been reading that when you get to the French Mansion world, the whole world is based on love and companionship, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. That's what it's based yeah, on. Yeah. The fear is gone. Okay. What a step just to get to that point, right? Can you imagine living in a world without fear? If we didn't have to fear bodily harm, 
a government that is over controlling us, a, a church that wants to run our lives instead of teach us proper concepts. If we could get over all these things, it would be like Christmas every single day. Because think of how you feel on Christmas Day. Are y'all with me on this? Yes. Christmas Day, yeah. you feel the brotherhood of the planet. And that's the way it should be every single day. Mm -hmm. right? It really should be every single day. Enough preaching. Let's go on to the next mm -hmm. one. How are we doing on time, dear? We're still okay. Okay. Okay, let's see. Gary. Uh, no, wait a minute. Let's just read. Um, Rodney, I think you're up again. I think Rodney just read, didn't you? Oh, did Rodney? I'm sorry, y'all. I can't keep my head I thought I did. I just read. Yeah. Okay. Then, Gary, you're up again. Okay. When it comes to the sharp and well-defined conflicts between the higher and lower tendencies of the races, between what really is right or wrong, not merely what you may call right or wrong, you can depend upon it that the adjuster will always participate in some the definite and active manner in such experiences. The fact that such adjuster actively may be unconscious to the human partner does not in the least distract from its value and reality. So when when you come to a conflict between right and wrong, the adjuster is always there to help you out, figure which is right and which is wrong. Jesus said it as good as anything I ever heard. When you come to a decision, there's always a voice that's there that says, this is the way. Okay. And that voice can come from the spirit of truth. That voice can come from the Holy Spirit. And that voice can come from your thought adjuster within. Okay. So every human conflict, there's a way. All right. There's also a, an important thing in the last sentence. Uh, if you flip it back and I'll read it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll flip it back for you. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, it says the fact that such an adjuster activity may be unconscious to the human partner does not in the least distract from its value and reality. So basically saying, even though you are not consciously talking to him, you're still getting the benefit, which I think that's, is important. That's exactly right. It's still there, whether you know that it comes from there or not. Right? Okay. Um, Diane, you're back up again. If you have a personal guardian of destiny, and should fail of survival. That garden, guardian angel must be adjudicated in order to receive vindication as to the faithful execution of her trust. But thought adjusters are not thus subjected to examination when their subjects fail to survive. We all know that while an angel might possibly fall short of the perfection of ministry, thought adjusters work in the manner of paradise perfection. Their ministry is characterized by a flawless technique, which is beyond the possibility of criticism by any being outside of Divinington. You have perfect guides. Therefore, is the goal of perfection certainly attainable? Did y'all catch that? Wow. Your guide is perfect beyond anything else. It always leads you the right way. Your guardian angel may stumble in taking care point. of you yeah <laughs> and if it, that's the case then she is adjudicated according to what she did her what her trust how many times have i said the problem with politics is a misuse of trust have i not said that over and over and over again and that still goes on today but your your guardian angels are not perfect they make mistakes they do the best they possibly can. Your thought adjuster does not make mistakes ever. Okay. So if you fail to survive, it's not because your thought adjuster let you down. That's not going to happen. Okay. If you fail to survive, it could be something having to do 
with your guardian angel, which is but not very likely, more than likely the decisions you yourself have made in your life. Okay. So you're responsible, not anyone else. All mm -hmm. right. Okay. God in man. Uh, Jane, would you take the next one? Six, God in man. It is indeed a marvel of divine condescension for, for the exalted and perfect adjusters to offer themselves for actual existence in the minds of material creatures, such as the mortals of Urantia, really to consummate a probationary union with the animal origin beings of Earth. Okay, so... What they're saying here is basically this is the epitome of something coming down from an exalted, perfect state to the minds of the material creatures, which is totally imperfect, okay, to work in the minds of mortals to make these mortals who are on a probationary scale. In other words, when we get to the first mansion world, it's not 100% guaranteed we're going to go on forever, is it? We're still in a probationary status, okay? So they're still checking us out. Until we fuse, we're still being checked out constantly that we're on the right right track. And so what they're saying here is these, these pieces of God are coming down to imperfection and trying to union, uh, create a union with the animal origin being so that you can become perfect, be perfect even as I am perfect, okay? You got a perfect guide. There's no excuse where you can't develop perfection, okay? I, like, I know we'd like to make it, make excuses like that, but it don't work that way. Okay. Uh, Lech, would you take the next one, please? Okay. <clears throat> uh, no matter what the previous status of the inhabitants of a world, subsequent to the bestowal of a divine son and after the bestowal of the spirit of truth upon all humans, the adjusters flock to such a world to indwell the minds of all normal will creatures. Following the completion of the mission of a paradise bestowal son, these monitors truly become the kingdom of heaven within you. Through the bestowal of the divine gifts, the Father makes the closest possible approach to sin and evil, for it is literally true that the adjuster must coexist in the mortal mind, even in the very midst of human unrighteousness. The indwelling adjusters are particularly tormented by those thoughts which are purely sordid and selfish. They are distressed by irreverence for that which is beautiful and divine, and they are virtually thwarted in their work by many of man's foolish animal fears and childish anxieties. So what's this telling us? It's telling us that the thought adjusters, if you choose a pathway of evil, a pathway of destruction, a pathway that hurts your fellow human beings, you're torturing your thought adjuster, okay? Because that thought adjuster has to exist on the same plane as the human mortal mind. And if the human mortal mind is concentrated on nothing but evil, it is constantly in, in conflict with that mind throughout its entire existence within that mind. <clears throat> think of it that way. So let's let's think about this for a second. We we have a couple more minutes here. Uh, if we find people that are surrounded by evil and taking over the world, and their whole existence is about money and cheating. And that sort of thing. Do you think that's a, a torture to the thought adjuster? Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. 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 It is. Right. Definitely. And we see those type of people, especially on TV, every single day. We do. You know, if you want to see that in action, go to YouTube. 
Okay. There are video after video after video of people that are torturing their thought adjuster every day. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just all there is to it. There are those that are not, though. There, there, there are those out there that are trying to do nothing but good, that spend their life trying to uplift the human race, that spend their life trying to help other people. And that's the kind of people we want to be associated with in life, right? As much as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really funny because we think that the only hope, holy people out there are evangelists, don't we? But that's Ooh. not the case. There's evangel evangelists. There are evangelists for the human race that aren't evangelists. In other words, there are people out there trying to spread God's love that have nothing to do with religion. They have nothing to do with building a church. They have nothing to do with asking for money 24 hours a day to make their little temple to be beautiful and that sort of thing. All these things have nothing to do with the, with the love of God. Okay. So we know we, we can see what's going on around us and you can determine yourself whether these people are living a godly life or are they living a selfish, self, self-absorbed life? You know what I'm saying? The big difference. Okay. And that's all I have to say tonight. I'm stop. I, I'm done preaching. Any comments before we close tonight? Well, Pastor, you have five more minutes. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna cut it off there because we have six more slides in this uh, this section of this uh, paper, and I'm gonna save them for next time because I don't want to stop at two slides left. All right, so we can we can cover these next six slides really well, and then next time after that we can go on with paper 109, the next on the thought adjusters. So, and it'll may not take up the whole time but if we did like we did tuesday it may take all all the whole hour to get through those six slides <laughs> the <rain laughs> <I> go, <laughs> you know <laughs> all right y'all and i'm gonna wave to myself good night but <laughs> i have to figure out how to night get night. That um let's say a little prayer real quick for tonight all right um rodney would you like to close us in prayer tonight let me just stop the share here uh, not, not, no. okay. All right. How about you, Jane? Would you like to close us tonight? Can I just do a quote? I have it you right can. in front of me. Well, whatever you're led okay. to do is fine. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, beloved Jesus, we thank you for your mission and we, we love you. We want to be like you. And we will do our best to do just this, as you asked us, drawing, drawing close to your fellow man in understanding, sympathy, and with unselfish devotion, you will lead them into a saving knowledge of the Father's love. The words of Jesus, you be 191 F.3. That's beautiful. That's great. Yes. Amen and amen, as they say. Amen. <laughs> I just have it on my desk. I like to refer to it as a re constant reminder. Well, that, that was great. We appreciate it. Okay. And I'll say good night to everyone out there in good night in Facebook. Thank you, Roger. Things. You're welcome. Thank You're you. welcome. We'll see everybody next time. Close the up. Thanks. Pardon me? I, I've got a question for you. Oh, okay. Finish. After we close everything? Oh, okay. All right. Let me hit stop here. Give me a second. Make this one over here, too. <laughs>